beautiful black people, I'm back. Um, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Moby, and this is my second video. In the first video, I briefly introduced to you what my um, ideals were for this channel. Now I kind of want to just tell you just a little bit about my background. I am the middle girl, the middle child of three, and we grew up in the church and it was through growing up in the church and black history programs that I was introduced to W.E.B. Du Bois, Booker T. Washington, Langston Hughes, Maya Angelou, Ralph Ellis. This is when the foundation was laid um, early on through the church, through my household. It was Charles Sumner High School, the first black high school west of the Mississippi, that I was introduced to Harper Lee, Zoe Neal Hurston, Toni Morrison, Alice Walker. It was the great JSU in Jackson, Mississippi, Jackson State University, that I was introduced to um, people such as um, Francis, uh, Francis uh, C. Welsing through the ISIS paper. We were required to read the ISIS paper. Um, James Baldwin, Sam Greenlee, Stanley Carmichael, which was later known um, as, he was later known as Kwame. It was the Dr. Robert Williams and the Dr. Jacqueline uh, Franklin that introduced me to great black thought. So as you can kind of see in that brief little piece that I shared with you, that I was introduced at an early age to black greatness, to black thought, to black excellence. And it started at home and then it went to through um, church. And then my high school, I went to an all black high school in the college preparatory program where I had an excellent teacher, um, Dolores Atkins, who did everything that she could to make sure that we read black literature and she introduced us to black literature. And then going to Jackson State. And if you were um, a major at Jackson State and you happen to have Robert Williams, Dr. Robert Williams, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. This was a professor who um, taught criminal justice courses as well as statistics in the uh, sociology and criminal justice um, program. And he started every lecture with Swahili and ended every lecture with Swahili. So it was at Jackson State that I walked around campus with others and we felt um, the pride in being black. And we understood that our blackness meant something. It was at Jackson State that I protested and marched, um, protested against the bell curve. I marched when it was time to um, celebrate and march for Emmett Till. That was things that we um, did at Jackson State University. I love the idea that I was able to go to a all black high school that had a proud tradition of excellence since 1875. And then leaving there and going to an HBCU, nothing like it, would not trade my experience in for the world. And it helped shape who I am today. After leaving grad school and, and doing undergrad at Jackson State, I then went to um, a predominantly white institution here in St. Louis, Missouri, which is Webster University, to earn another master's and uh, later my doctorate. One of the things that I can say is showing up black at that university um, really showed me that color matters, zip codes matter, where you live matters, what high school I attended mattered. I can remember the first statistical, business statistical course that I took the professor asked for zip codes. I, coming back to St. Louis, really didn't realize what that meant. No one had ever asked me 
what zip code I lived in. No one asked me what high school did I attend, but that seemed to be the question of the day. So I quickly realized that those two questions are important here in the U.S., and especially in the area in which I live in and in the Midwest. The first thing a lot of people do to size you up is what high school did you attend, especially in St. Louis, Missouri? What high school? Because then they think they have an idea of who you are and how you grew up and your social status. So this professor at this predominantly white institution that I attended was going around asking for zip codes. And so I'm thinking, you know, I'm proudly telling my zip code, but I'm thinking he's going to use this um, for some statistical example for the class. And I think this was class maybe day one or two of the class. But I quickly realized that he asked for that zip code because he was sizing at us, us up. He then started to relate to the students in that class that I noticed came from a, a different zip code than me. We started out the class with maybe three or four um, other blacks. And I, myself and one other person finished. And then, the, then I looked around and I was the only person of color that finished the coursework. And the class was very interesting. He taught mostly to the kids that were from a certain zip code. And I had to go and look the zip codes up because that's just not something I was familiar with because I've never, um, never been asked that type of question. Uh, and again, I'm moving from back, um, left at age 17, I think. Yeah, 17, lived in Jackson, Mississippi and was able to travel throughout the South and stay with my sister when she moved to San Antonio, Texas. And there was just certain questions nobody had ever asked. Um, so I later realized that was for a reason. And that experience as well was valuable because it taught me a lot as I matriculated from predominantly black institutions to now I'm at a predominantly white institution. Different experience. Um, leaving that university taught me a lot, like I said. And one of the things I realized is that I loved my blackness and I have never wanted to be anything else. I cultivated a relationship in undergrad with a Nigerian student that really sparked, helped spark the interest that I have in the continent. I was always interested in Africa, but not to the extent that having a relationship with him and also taking electives in African politics at the university, which I chose to do because I became inter very interested in all things Africa. It, those classes allowed me to meet other Africans. The connection that uh, I had with the Nigerian um, student and there was a group of us that hung out and I was able to ask questions and he would make statements and I would just watch how you know he was proud and he was proud to be African and especially Nigerian um, and it, I was just really intrigued with the African continent so from that point I knew if God allowed me to live that I would go on to um, take vacations and to visit various African countries. And so far I've done just that. Um, not as many as I'd like, because I have really gotten addicted to Ghana. So I took my first Ghanaian trip in 2012, uh, 2011 or 12 was my first trip to Ghana. I went with a group, which was wonderful. From there, I've been going back every year. I've had an opportunity in undergrad. My sister was a graduate graduate school. My sister took me to my first um, out of the country experience, which was Mexico. And from there in 2000, Jamaica was the next place I had gone. I have been very fortunate to visit um, and travel a lot since then. One of my dreams, long-term dreams, has been 
when if I finish college, uh, you know, we've all been told that in order to do certain things in life, you know, we've been um, sold this. You need to get a degree. You need to go to college. You get out of college. Before you, you leave college, you need to find you a husband. After you do that, you start your family, you get your career. And that was the path that I was moving on. Um, and so I, I was praying, you know, instead of starting a family, I wanted to be able to see the world. And I've had just a taste of that. So I've been to um, just about all of the black islands you can think of. I've been on about maybe 10 cruises now. I've also been to um, Spain, Italy, France, the UK, Canada, um, where else? Egypt, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, uh, Ghana, as I named, um, and a host of other, China, I've been to China as well, and a host of other um, places that I can really say after visiting those places and continuing um, to go to Africa, well, let me say Ghana, because I really like to reference the country and not so much the entire continent, because we know that there are so, 54, what, 54, 55, you hear 54, you hear 55 countries on the continent of Africa. So I've only been to two. This year in 2020, before the virus came, the intent was to visit Rwanda, South Africa, Senegal, and the Gambia. And it is my hope that I can share that journey um, with you in 2021. I've rescheduled all of those trips and hopefully, preferably, I'll have an opportunity to go for 2021. So this is kind of a little bit about my background, a little bit about me in terms of why this channel why some of the topics that you um, will see that I'll share on this channel. And it is really more about, again, I'll say, it is my hope that this channel will um, provide an outlet for African Americans and Africans to have dialogue with one another as it relates to relationship building for support, to support one another. It is also my hope that um, people can see that um, traveling is important for the mind, the soul, and to acquire knowledge. So it is my hope that just sharing a little bit about me helps you to just understand why I am taking this route with my channel and what my interests are. I want to see the world and hope that I continue to have an opportunity to travel because I've been blessed to at least visit one or more countries a year. And I'm hoping that um, I can stay well and everything um, is well and that I can continue this journey and then I can take you on this journey with me and that you can kind of see how black culture and relationships are so important to the progression of the black community, whether it's in the diaspora or on the continent, and how important it is for us to build community and wealth together. How important it is for us to challenge some of the misconceptions and misunderstandings and the myths that we have been um, told about one another. That means blacks all over the world have been told a lot of things about depending on where we're from, we don't get along, we don't like each other. And I hope that this channel can continue the narrative that we're seeing already being told and shown on you various YouTube channels. And it is my hope that together we can grow and glow. I hope that I can learn from you you can learn from me and together we'll be better. Be blessed and I look forward um, to this journey with you.